Are, uh, are we all feeling a different type of craving within us, a desire, a different longing, uh, wanting more and more touch of the Lord? I was talking to my sister the other, uh, the other day. I said, I just, I just, I'm just captivated. I'm going to new places. I feel like a dog running around with drool hanging off the side of my mouth because I'm just so anxious. I'm just craving the Lord in such a new way these days. I know that's a little graphic, but I, I feel like a child all over again in his presence as he's showering, as, as he's just extending his love to us. I feel something different. I don't know what the end of the road holds. Well, actually, that's not true. We do know what the end of the road holds. It holds us in his presence, glorifying and exalting his name forever throughout eternity as brothers and sisters, as he is showering his love upon us, his mercy, his light. And there will be no shadows, no darkness. Nothing would ever overtake us. There will not be any more shedding of tears. We, we, we are going to be rejoicing. That's what the end of the road holds. And he's saying, enjoy this journey as you walk from now into eternity. As a, I do have real conversations with the Lord. And he gets real with me, believe it or not. And he, he put something on my, on my heart on Friday. And the content is love like water. But I'm before him, it's like, Lord, we need some meat. We need some meat. Not milk. And he said to me, every word that proceeds from my mouth is meat. Lack of understanding is the milk. If this is milk, why isn't it understood? If the love that I have is comprehended, that peace healing and power will flow through from it. So this morning I'd like for us to uh, paint a picture of the depth of the Father's love. Let us glean a deeper understanding of the endless bounds of his unconditional love towards both the sinner and the saint, the just and the unjust. Or, and the unjust. Lord, help us to glean a deeper comprehension of your limitless love. So, Father, this morning, I just ask that you would portray your heart, Father, that you would pour your heart out upon us, Lord. And, Father, that there would be no scales upon our hearts, Lord. Father, there would be no hard spots, Lord. But, Father, we would just, our hearts would be sponges this morning, Lord, as you give us revelation, as you give us uh, more beauty of who you are in, in the depths of the love that you have for each and every one of us, Lord. So, Father, help us not to be in our own way this morning. But, Father, may we yield to you and your Holy Spirit as you lead and guide us. On Friday, I came in, and a few ladies were in here praying. They said, can we pray for you? They didn't even say a word, just walked up, laid hands, and the Lord just started downloading. It was qu quite a beautiful thing. He said to me, my love is like water. Do you know of water? Do you know where, where it comes from and where it goes? Do you know of its boundaries? If you want to see my depth, the depth of my love, follow the waters. It has no beginning. It has no end. It is constantly flowing, moving, filling, carving, cycling, weaving in and through all life. It is continuously moving and bringing forth life. The clouds open at my command and release nourishment upon the earth. It flows down the mountains, over the fields, and into the valleys. It makes its way into the rivers and streams and continues to flow. It eventually makes its way to the ocean that are vast and deep. It evaporates and fills the atmosphere and returns to, this, to be stored in my clouds, awaiting my command. And the process continues and has no end. I bring forth life and beauty through the water I send. The whole earth rejoices as I sent my provision. Please absorb this. Absorb this this morning. We drink water. Take it for granted. We see it rain. We take it for granted. And he's like, 
my love. This beautiful thing called water sustains you. It takes care of you. It has no beginning and it has no end. Even more than that is my love that I have for you. And I just started weeping as he was showing this to me. It's like, Lord, I know of your love. But it goes on and on. It's layers upon layers of his love. The thing is, even in this life as we breathe air, we will never get the full comprehension of his love until we're in his presence. And then we'll be like, oh, Oh, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. I didn't catch this while I was in bodily form, while I was breathing air upon the earth. But, oh, Lord, is this truly who you are? Do you truly love us this much? And he would say, yes, my son, yes, my daughter. I have loved you before the foundations of the earth. Before before you were conceived in your mother's womb. I had a plan. I, had, I was writing the pages of your life. I was writing these pages and it was for a hope and a future and my love being poured out upon you for you never wanting, lacking, needing or hurting. That is my love for you. That is the depth. And that's what he is wanting us to open up. Why do we go through such milk? Why are we talking about the milk this morning? That's not really milk. He's saying if you comprehend, if you comprehend, if you comprehend the love that I have for you, you will be able to cast out demons. You will be able to raise the, the dead. You will be able to call forth the dry bones. And the very life that I have placed within you, you're going to speak things forth. It all is based upon the love that I have for you. The meat is the love that I have for you. It's the revelation. Not new revelation. It's things that should, we, we should naturally know. But he's like, no. You've allowed so much to enter into your mind, you've forgotten who you are and how much I truly, truly care and love you. So this morning, no, it's not, it's not milk. It's not wool. It is water. It's, 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 it's meat from heaven. It's manna that he wants to give to us. He wants to take us from where we are today and place his power within us. But it is all based upon love. The love that he has for us is the fuel that propels and sends us forth. My provision of rain that I send produces food for all create, creatures, great and small. It sustains livestock in the barns and in the fields. The crops of the field are a gift given by the water that pours from my heavens. The birds of the air and the fish of the ocean rely upon the water that I send. The rain that I send can carve through the roughest of terrain and destroy the greatest of fortresses, yet is gentle upon the petal of a rose and the wings of a hummingbird. I do send rain upon the just and the unjust. The redeemed rejoice and the cursed curse. Nevertheless, I send the rain to sustain both the righteous and unrighteous. I do not send rain because it is wanted or unwanted. I send rain because it is needed. This is my love. I send it because it is needed. We could just stop right there. Why did God send his only begotten son? Because the world needed it. Every single morning we wake up, we need his love. The just and the unjust, the saint and the sinner, all need his love. Because without his love, that is actually everywhere and sustains all, even that cursed wouldn't be able to curse. But his love never fails. It never fails. My love is like water. It has no beginning and no end. Is this true? Genesis 1.1 In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. He was stirring something. He was moving something. Doing something with the life-giving waters. He had a plan for the waters of the earth in the beginning. 
Right there it is. And in Revelation 22, all the way at the end. 22.1 And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and the Lamb. So as we can clearly see, water, like the love of God, was in the beginning and has no end. No man can escape it, and all men need it. Lucy Larkram wrote this, A drop of water, if it could write its own history, would explain the universe to us. In other words, water is an endless cycle. The very water that we swim in today is the same that the Spirit was hovering over in the beginning in Genesis. Do you believe that? It's a continuous circle. And as we talk about water this morning, understand it's the love of God at the beginning. At the beginning. Water gives birth to life, nourishes it, sustains it, enriches it, and lets it bloom and blossom. We are born of water, right? Wrong? We are born of water. Think about this. To be born in the Spirit. We are sustained in water while in the womb and are born through water. The, the, the Word even talks about this. God's love is like water. We can fall in it, we can drown in it, and we cannot live without it. And that is our prayer this morning, right? Lord, let us fall in the water. Let us fall in your love. Let us drown in your love, Lord, because, Lord, we cannot live without it anyway. Amen? Lord, drown us. Drown us in your love. Drown us in your truth. Mark Nepo writes this, Water in its clear softness fills whatever hole it finds. It is not skeptical, or distrusting. It does not say this goalie is too deep or this field is too open. Like water, the miracle of love is that it covers whatever it touches, making the touch thing grow while leaving no trace of its touch. I, I, I would have to blot out that last part, leaving no trace of its tr tr touch, because whenever the Lord touches something, it changes, right? But other than that, that's a pretty accurate statement. There is no cavern or hole that is too deep or wide that the love of God cannot fill. It covers us and can change everything that it touches. God's love has no bounds or restrictions. It shows no favoritism. I want you to absorb that. What holes, what caverns may have been in your heart or are in your heart, rest assured... Can the love of God fill those caverns? I can testify for that personally with hurts and things that I've went through in my life. All of a sudden, I woke up one day and they were gone. They were filled with something. That may be you this morning. Or perhaps there are some holes, there are some caverns within our hearts or our minds where He is wanting to fill those caverns with His love this very morning. He is willing, and He is able. Without God's love, just as with water, desolation and death comes, growth ceases. And we can clearly see that this year, right? The rains paused for a little bit this summer. What happened? The grass kind of stopped growing. Water, rain, that's us, that's mankind. Without the love of the Father. And we'll get close to some resistance here soon. Things quit growing in us. Oh, we're getting resistance right now. Resistance brings brokenness. Why did all the trees bust in Cedar Rapids a year ago? Because they were resisting the wind, right? It was the resistance that actually caused them to snap off. If they would have been palm trees or something else that have a lot of sway, 
that, that showed no resistance and could move with the wind, then we would not have topless trees in Cedar Rapids. But it is resistance that causes things to break. Even mechanically, right? It's the resistance. Resistance in a motor is not your friend, right? Resistance. Most things break instead of transformation because they resist. Man is broken because of resistance against God's love. Many do not grow spiritually because of resistance of God's love and His watering. Many do not grow into mature men and women because of resistance, the resistance of change in life. Rather, they cling to adolescence. Okay, I'll break this down a little bit. We see this epidemic in our society. A lot of young adults that should be, second word, adults, have not moved on with life to become adults, right? The reason being is because they are resisting change in their life, right? I still want to eat my Cheetos and play my Xbox versus going and getting a job and moving on with life, right? Example. We as Christians, if we are resisting the things that the Lord... Ooh, if we're resisting these things that the Lord is trying to do in our life, whether it's cor correction, uh, teaching, so on and so if we're resisting those things, then what's going to happen? We will not grow. We will not mature. Make sense? And God is saying, quit resisting my spirit... Quit resisting my, my correction. Quit resisting my teaching. Quit resisting my love that you may grow and flourish. But whenever resistance comes, it, it causes brokenness. As believers in Christ, a brokenness or hindrance in our development into maturity is a resistance of God's correction, His watering, and His love. We resist and resist, and then wonder why we are still broken or have not grown into maturity or have become, have a stale walk. So what do we do? We say, yes, Lord, open up my heart to receive. Man, the, the, the Lord is trying to speak to His people. Open up, let's open up our hearts. No more resistance problem is we've had so much resistance through the years in the, even the body. Lord, I will do what you want as long as. I'm going to resist you because I have an agenda first and if there's still some gaps or what have you open in my life or in my heart, then I will give those gaps to you. But yesterday's gone. God wants us to embrace His love completely, just like water. If we receive His love and correction, we grow and flourish. When do we quit growing? When we quit receiving His word. When we quit receiving His, His uh, counsel. Water becomes stagnated if it is not moving. If it becomes stagnant, it is not useful for drinking and has no nourishment or refreshment comes from, or, or refreshment will come from stagnated water. We don't like water that's been setting out for four days, do we? Why not? It's just not good. Period. Good for nothing. Right? So Lord, continuously flow through us. The Word says if we water, we ourselves will be watered. That's what the Word says. We must be a steady stream of living water. If we are not, we are dead water. The scripture that came to my mind was, we have lost our saltiness. If salt, if salt loses its saltiness, what good is it? What happens, to the, what happens to the salt then? Word says, it gets thrown out. If the water is stale, what happens to the water? Throw it out. 
Maybe it'll do some good for the grass or something. And we're to be the salt of the earth. We're to have rivers of living water flowing out of us, correct? Well, how can we have rivers of living water flow out of us if we don't have rivers of living water flowing into us from the very throne of God? The continuous cycle. Work a long, hard day, sweaty, out mowing the yard or whatever. Is there anything better than a good old-fashioned cold glass of water? Not mountain pew, but water. It quenches. It fills. He is to fill us and we are to fill others. He may be saying these days, hey prophet, can these dry bones live? You have my breath in you. You have my, my living waters in you. Hey prophet, are you still the salt? Is there saltiness in you or not? Prophesy over these dead dry bones. Wake the dead with the rivers of living water that is within you. What, what did he t tell uh, Ezekiel? He said, you prophesy over these bones, right? Can they live? Prophesy. There's something in you, Ezekiel. There's something in you, prophet. Keep it flowing. These bones are dry. Your bones are alive. Your bones are wet. So pour in. Pour in. That I might refresh you. So do we have that kind of, of refreshment upon our tongue as, as, as we speak to our loved ones the, or, or acquaintances or those out upon the street? Are we, are we pouring that living water, receiving it and pouring it out? A lot of us have a hard time receiving love too, right? That's got to be snapped. That's got to be stopped. I'm just as guilty as anyone on that. It took me a long time to even receive a compliment. Don't walk up and... I was just not accustomed to it whenever I first came to the Lord. Even now I'm still a little bit skirmish. What is that exactly? It's an unwillingness to receive love. If we can't receive love here, does it come here? It's time for some readjustment in our brain. Anyone else ever have a hard time just receiving love? It's easier for us to give it out. Hey, yeah, I'll be nice. I'll show you a little bit of love. But whenever it comes this way, do we actually receive it? And if there's a hindrance, is there a hindrance between us receiving the, the love of the Father? It's true stuff and it really happens. Boys that have no relationship with their fathers. We see that all the time in the Christian community, right? I didn't have much relationship with my pa, so how is this relationship supposed to be healthy? We have to understand he is the good, good father. And we love our, our natural father. But, but the, these are some things that need to be dealt with. He's saying, let me wash over you with my love. Or young ladies and your parents as well. We know the routine, right? And he's saying, let me wash over you with my love. Like the corn stalk. Just stand out in the field. Just the way you are. And allow me to send my rain upon you. And that's what he's trying to speak to his body today. Let me wash over you. Open up your hearts to receive it because it goes so deep. All of us still hold on to a little bit of this and a little bit of that, right? And he's saying, no. Some of us may have been walking with the Lord for many years, but there's still that one thing over here. And he said, let me wash over that. Spotless, without wrinkle. Let me bring healing. If we are self-centered, we are dead, unmovable water, unmoving water that cannot give life. We have cut ourselves out of the cycle of refreshing. Of course, we are human and are easily hurt if we are not loved back or if we are loved poorly. But we waste so much of life's energy by deliberating who and when they shall be worthy of our love. When in the deepest elemental sense, these choices are not our choices to make any more than the rain can choose what it shall fall upon.
This is saying we ought to love just as our Father loves us. Just as. No restrictions. Is that hard? Never. No, it's hard sometimes. But he's saying, if I can fill you with the fullness of my love, transform and heal you in every single way, can you not pour that same love out? Because if you pour that same love out, even on that person that hurt you, if you pour that out, I may heal their heart. And then they, and in fact, will turn around and pour out the very same love. We have to keep this continuous flow of God's love moving, just like the waters. Make sense? But then what would happen if that person that hurt us turned around and started loving us back? Then we have a whole other dilemma. Do I allow them to love me? And that's where we need to go to the Lord sometimes, right? In truth, the more we let love flow in and through us, the more we will love properly. We want to love properly, don't we, folks? We don't want to love poorly. That's just not really our design. We don't want... I don't want to love my wife poorly. I don't want to love my son poorly. I don't want to love you poorly. I want to love you all excellently, right? Just as he loves me or us, we want to love excellent with excellence, correct? And this brings... And whenever we do this, it brings healing to both of us. We, in essence, are allowing the rivers of living water to flow through us. We have a choice to make. Do I let the love of the Lord overtake me that I may pour out that love upon those around me? Somewhere along the way, we have adopted a mentality, a thought process, that if I resist love or withhold it, I can't be hurt any longer. I cannot control my pain and dis- I can control my pain and discomfort. I must confess that's where I was at one point in my life. I kept everybody right at the end of my arm for a reason. I didn't want any pain in here. It seemed totally logical. A lot of people have friends all the way well, since this high. I'm not one of those people. I have had many acquaintances in my life because I have kept so many people at an arm link because I did not want them to get too close to me because I didn't want unnecessary blowny and hurt. So whenever you come to the Lord, then we have some decisions to make, right? Do I allow myself to open up to be hurt Because it may or may not come. We all know that, right? No guarantees. But do I allow myself to open up? And of course the answer is, we must. I can come across a hundred people. And 95 of them may not hurt me. But there's always the five. So do I close off? No. Do not grow weary in doing good. For you will reap in due season if you do not lose heart. And sometimes these are decisions we must consciously make. Do I open up or not? And he is saying, open up. Let the floodgates open up. Let me pour through you. Let me pour into you. Cast your cares and your worries upon me. This, in fact, is the very opposite of truth. Perfect love casts out all fear. All fear of being hurt, betrayed, used, abused, abandoned. Only love with no thought of return can soften the hurt and suff- and the hurt and suffering soul. That's the only way to truly love without any expectation of return. If you think about it, it's the only true love there is. 
If there's expectation on our love, then it's not love. True? Roll it over in your mind. Actually go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. It'll probably confirm that. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Understanding the depths of the Lord's love. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its root by the stream. If we do that, it creates a healthy root system. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. Is that what we want? Green leaves. It has no worries in a year of drought. It's always stable. It never fails to bear fruit. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. Fruit comes from the understanding of the infallible, unyielding, relentless love of God. You want fruit? It's love-based. Fact. There is no fruit outside of it being love-based. We are to love like the waters also, a continuous, flowing, repetitive motion of loving without reservation, without discretion. Psalms 42, 1 through 2 in the Living Bible. As the deer pants for the water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. Where can I find him to come and stand before him? And that's what I was, uh, I was speaking earlier. We are to be nothing more than corn stalks standing out underneath his showering love. Just standing before him. But we need to be panting. Are, are you feeling this panting? Are you feeling this more of a desire within your heart, within your members? I must, I must come before you, Lord. I want to feel more of you. I want more of your washing over my being. Are we feeling that urgency within our hearts these days? Where else will we go? What else would we do? Isn't it all waste outside of his love and his grace? We don't want to be there. And he's saying, let me wash. Let me love. We have a hard time allowing him to love us sometimes. The Lord wants us to stand before him as the crops of the field that he may shower over us with his healing, refreshing rains. He wants to nourish and satisfy the depths of our being, those inner yearnings of our hearts. He wants us yearning and desiring his thirst-quenching living waters, stopping at nothing to be filled to overflowing. He wants us walking confidently, securely, Securely in the understanding of his vast and never-ending love. He wants us to have total, complete confidence in our identity in him. He has showered us with his love since birth, and his showers of love will last an eternity. He wants us not to resist his love, but rather embrace, crave, and desire it above all things and all desires. The church of Christ is in a new era. Yesterday is gone, and it will never return. New, level, uh, uh, new levels of revelation must set into the hearts of the children of God. These new revelations should not be new to the church. So whenever I say new revelation, I don't mean it's, it's something new under the sun. That's not what I mean. I mean, we have to open up our hearts and our minds and our, uh, say, Lord, now shine it. I know what your word says now. Penetrate my heart in such a way. Bring the revelation that's always been, but we've missed, or I have missed, or the church has missed. That's what I mean by new revelation. Because the word does say there's nothing new under the sun. These new revelations should not be new to the church, but must be finally comprehended and absorbed. 
He wants to just shatter and destroy all strongholds and hindrances in our lives that may cast any shadows. He wants us drinking, swimming in the living waters of his abundant and overflowing love. Psalm 72, 6, it says, He shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing, like showers that water the earth. Is Angie available? Or Joey? But... Friday as as he is just showing me. He's like, follow the water. If you can trace the water, it's only a small glimpse. It's only uh, a small glimpse of the love that I have for you that I pour out. Do we think about water daily? We need it daily. We do the dishes. We take showers. We we drink it. We can go swimming. It rains. But he's like, look at that. That is no comparison. The need that man has, the brokenness that man has is because they do not, they're rejecting, they do not know the absolute depth of love that I have for them. And he's wanting us to just absorb and be a a piece of conduit for him to flow through. Do we want to see all the people set free and delivered it will not happen outside of love many years ago true story there was a young man he was bound up this actually was a flat out epic failure but this young man was was bound up of course had a couple of little shotgun how do I say this right? A couple of Christian pistols running around. And they were just being just as evil as any demon or spirit could be. What got accomplished? Nothing. And the Lord told me, just love on this man and watch the shackles fall from him don't have to get loud don't have to get all crazy up on him show my heart and watch what happens and that's all the Lord wants to do he wants us to grasp his heart and he wants us to extend that same heart because everything that we do in the kingdom has to flow from an unconditional love everything Without any expectations, we have hope, but no expectations. That makes sense? Lord, as he gave his life, no expectation, but he had hope that John Hankins would bow his knee and serve him. But even if I would not, he would not have changed his mind. There was zero expectations. You can apply your name there too. So whenever we're loving those that are even unlovable, no expectations. Because if there's expectations, that means our love has limits. His love has no limits. And it's the limitless love that all the way back at the beginning is the breaker anointing.